Hi, it's Chris Flanagan here. I'm back today with another video looking at the thermals in my PC011 Dynamic Razor build that I built about six weeks or so ago. I had made a video looking at the thermal performance about two weeks ago, and I thought that was me finished with um, testing the thermals in this case. But I was left a little bit dissatisfied um, with the results of that video. Partly because um, when I built the PC originally, it looked great. Um, it had nine fans in it. The fans at the bottom were intake. The fans at the back were exhaust. And at the top, you had the AIO set as exhaust. And this was the best setup, in my opinion, for aesthetics. But the performance wasn't particularly great with the CPU. So when I did my testing two weeks ago, I turned the fans at the um, rear round to intake. And there definitely was some benefit to CPU cooling. And the temperatures were a little bit better. But one of the big problems with this for me was aesthetically, it didn't look great. The other thing I tested in that video, and I'll put a link to the video in the description so you can have a look at it, was I removed the LL120 fans that I had put on the deep cool AIO radiator and replaced them with the original deep cool fans. And again, there was a slight um, benefit in performance as well. So I had a PC that was slightly cooler, but it didn't look great to me. Um, the light at the top was gone that the LL120 fans were giving. And I have three LL120 fans sitting on my bookcase not being used. And the fans at the rear of the case were the wrong way round, and every time I looked at them, that original Y factor was gone. But I thought I was a bit stuck because I had to choose between either having the case looking great or having a slight improvement in cooling. And I was about to go back to the original configuration because I just couldn't stand to look at it with things the wrong way round. And then I thought I would try something slightly out of the box. Um, and I think I've actually found the best fan configuration for this case. So for me, I really wanted the fans at the back of the case to be as exhaust so they're the right way round and look good. The fans at the bottom had to be intake to supply cooler to the GPU. There was no way round that. So the only other thing that I could change was the fans at the top of the case. So instead of having them set to exhaust, if I was to turn them round as intake and pull through the radiator and bring cool air in through the radiator and cool the CPU down, that was the only other thing I could try. Um, it would give me an aesthetically really good look, but what would the cooling performance be like? It would make sense that you would be bringing a lot of hot air into the case, but because you'd be bringing cool air through the radiator, it should offer pretty good cooling for the CPU. The fans at the back should hopefully take the hot air from the GPU and the CPU away and out the back, but would bringing that hot air in affect particularly the GPU temperatures and how much of a benefit would it give you with the CPU temperatures? And actually I was really really surprised with the results and I think when you look at them these are by far the best results in this case, and it looks really, really good as well. So looking at the temperatures with the fans in this configuration, so it's the fans at the bottom as intake, the fans at the back of the case as exhaust, and you've got the 360 millimeter radiator on the top with the fans um, pulling through it. Again, I had made the decision that I was gonna use all the LL120 fans because I really didn't like, although the deep cool fans were definitely a more efficient fan, I liked the light on the top. Um, and I'm really annoyed me having three LL120 fans sitting on my bookcase not being used. So I've decided I was gonna keep all nine LL120 fans in the case. So going on to the results, um, we got the best idle temperatures um, of any of the configurations I had used. So we had, for a CPU idle temperature of 35, and a GPU of 30. So they were the best temperatures I had recorded in any fan configuration. While gaming, 
um, the max CPU temperature was 67 and after half an hour's gaming on the PC and I did exactly the same tests in each of the configurations. So that was 10 degrees better than my original fan configuration and 4 degrees better than the one I had settled with in my last testing video. The only thing to say is the GPU temperatures did go up slightly in doing this and they were the worst GPU temperatures of any of the fan configurations that I had used. So the GPU temperature was 75 at the end of half an hour's gaming um, compared to 72 in the test I did a couple of weeks ago and 70 in my original configuration. But certainly to bring the CPU down by 10 temperatures I think is definitely worth the GPU coming up by 5. Um, the GPU will be very happy at 75. I then went on to repeat the 30 minutes IDA 64 stability tests with everything ticked. And previously the fan configurations didn't make an awful lot of difference to the CPU temperature. At every, no matter what you did, everything seemed to heat up. And the temperatures before were either 91 or 90. But this time we got temperatures of 84. So having that cool air coming in from outside did seem to make a real difference to the CPU temperatures. Looking at the GPU temperatures, the max GPU temperature was um, 74, which was actually only one degree hotter than the 73 um, I had when I had the AIO at the top um, as an exhaust and all other fans set as intake when we had all LL120 fans. So my original worry about all the components in the case heating up significantly by bringing hot air in from the top weren't really founded based on this. Okay, so I'm gonna run you through some of the graphs now of the actual temperature testing that I did. So over on the left-hand side of the screen, you've got the original configuration that I had. So that was the six exhaust fans there with the top as exhaust and intake at the bottom. And on the right hand side you've got the latest configuration with the AO at the top as intake, the bottom fans as intake and the rear of the case as exhaust. Um, previously I had quoted you just the minimum and maximum temperatures, but here you can very consistently see the whole way through the half an hour's gaming that the CPU temperatures were significantly lower um, than they were with the older configuration. You can see the slight increase in the GPU temperatures. It's the, the blue line at the top on the right hand side. But that was very minimal. Going on to the IDA64 stability test. And again, it's very clear on these graphs that the CPU was significantly lower all the way through the testing. So I think I found the perfect uh, fan configuration for this case. Again, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to most people. Most people think that you should have a standard way that air should flow through the case. It should come in from the bottom and out through the top because that's the way hot air rises. But again, the only way to, that I could do this in the case was to have the fans at the back the wrong way round as intake. The way I've got it at the moment where we've got air, cool air coming in from the top, cool air coming in from the bottom and going out the back seems to be the best fan configuration for this case and that's the configuration I'm going to be leaving my PC in. So I can enjoy a reasonably cool PC and actually enjoy the looks of it as well. Okay thanks for watching.